All right, we are back for the third episode of Inappropriate Earl this week after a three-week hiatus. You know, everyone keeps asking me, where are the new episodes? Where are the new episodes? Well, unless you guys want to start Ubering guests to my house, it ain't as fucking easy as you think it is. So I'll tell you when the new episodes are going to be, when the guests can get to my house and I can press record on the recorder I paid for that's hooked up to the mixing board I paid for, that's running through my MacBook that I paid for, that's running through the microphones that I paid for. This ain't free, people. People. I asked you guys for one fucking favor the last podcast. Tweet at Gene Simmons. Go on Inappropriate Earl. And not one fucking person did it. We've got 3,500 downloads this week on two episodes and not one person listened to me. So you'll get the new episodes when I get to them, you palming jackals. Very special guest. Whoa, Lois is barking. Lo- Lois, come on. Shh. Professional podcaster. Lois, shut up. Uh, Lois, 12 and 3 at Michael Vick's house. Lost your last three fights. Hello. Great, I'm bombing on my own podcast. Uh, we have a, a returning guest, one of the top requested returning guests on Inappropriate Earl, the one and only Chris Ramirez. What's up, Earl? What's going on? Uh, I'm just trying to get this podcast into the top 7,800 on iTunes. Nobody, nobody responded. You, you know what? I, I was hoping when I came over here, I was hoping that I would see that uh, girl that you had on the other night, the soap wrestling, the the soap opera girl. Uh, yeah, the great Melissa Archer. Oh God, she's so hot, man. I just, I was listening to that today on my way in from work, and. Uh, or did she say where she's from in Texas? Um, I want to say Dallas. She looks like a Dallas girl. Yes. Well, I meant it when I told her she she reminded me of uh, Victoria Principal. Oh, yeah, kind of the redhead thing and stuff. She's kind of got that uh, Pamela Ewing vibe. She looks like the type of chick that J.R. Ewing would have been banging on the side. Right. You know, he always had chicks like that all the time during Dallas and stuff. Did you watch Dallas when the new one came out? I liked it. And I saw the guy who played uh, John Ross, uh, which is JR's kid. He uh, works out at my gym. I want to say his name is Joshua Henderson. And I really thought that he kind of was like a young Larry Hagman. It's not looking wise, but... Uh, and I told him that. I said, dude, you play a great dick. Now, it is, does, does, is, is, so does John Ross, does he play like um, like JR did on the show and stuff? And is Bobby's son the good one? Is it kind of like that? or does, is Yeah, it- oh, it's it totally. Uh, and, the, and Bobby's son works out at my gym. So it was, uh, you know, weird to see like, you know, obviously I know the show's fictional, but I would like see them working out next to me i'm like fuck you're jr ewing's kid now are 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 is jr still alive in the show too is this- well he uh larry hagman was on the show but he he died right yeah he passed away in real life oh shit um so uh you know they i think i forgot how they killed him off in the storyline uh I like the show. I think it was on TNT. Is it coming back? Um, no, it got canceled. Ah, so. crap. And there's another guy, one of the bad guys, uh, Mitch Peligi, who uh, he played like the uh, scheming, uh, always trying to bone uh, Bobby's wife. Uh, you might know him from the X-Files. He was the bald guy in the X-Files. Mm. And he was also in Wes Craven's uh, movie Shocker. You know, since you know all these obscure guys, there's a guy that I've been I keep on seeing in these movies and tell me if you know who he is, okay? He's he's in uh He's in Ray Donovan right now, or he was, and he played this FBI. He's a ball headed guy. He's ball headed. He's got real bushy black eyebrows, and and he was he was following John Voight when that whole Armenian thing was going down and stuff. He was a guy that was kind of following them. You're talking about Hank Azaria? No, no, it's not him. No, it it was one of the cops. But I but I was I I had just seen him in another movie, and I was like, God, I just seen this guy because he's 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 he's, he's ball headed. He looks like a like a like a goon, and he's got real dark black eyebrows and he just looks like a like a monster kind of i probably i'll have to check it out i mean uh because uh, i've always been fascinated by character actors because to me they make a movie right like, or a tv show like uh 
I saw uh, Greg Henry at my gym, and like no one right now probably knows who Greg Henry is, but if I had your capabilities and could pop up his picture right now, right, you'd be like, oh my god, I've seen this guy in literally from everything from Scarface to Payback, the Mel Gibson film, uh, twenty he was on Twenty Four first season. Uh, I I asked him to be on my podcast. He he kind of blew me off, but like. So how many people does Gene Simmons want to tweet before? Oh, I don't know. I mean, you know, we had a good chemistry. Right. Uh, when I met him uh, recently, I got punked into thinking, and you know, I told the story in the last podcast, basically I was told to fill in for this girl, Whitney Rice, on a stand-up show. I, I get there. Uh, they wouldn't let me in the Clive Davis Theater. And I was like, well, this is a weird place to have a stand-up gig. Right. And I could tell it was, it was packed. So the the guy's like, you can't go in until you hear your name. You're the last comic, and we're at capacity. And everyone was in on the gag. Uh, and so I hear my name. I run down the ramp. It's Gene Simmons on the stage with a chair next to him. And uh, my friends, uh, Skyler and Ryan, who set up the prank, were like, interview him. Oh, and wow. He loved it. It was wild. I basically ended up roasting him for 10 minutes. That's awesome. How long? It was 10, the, the whole thing was 10 minutes long? Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, and it, apparently it was like, it was a huge comedy show. They had like Bill Burr and Owen Benjamin and, and Skyler and a couple other comics. So, uh, you know, they were pretty, you know, they, you know, it's hard to follow guys like Bill Burr. Was it, was it his birthday or something like that for him? Or you know, I'm still to this day, not sure what the, uh, what the, show's theme was right it just i guess they knew gene was going to be there and and they're like well who could we get that would like have fun with him and then skylar knowing me uh was like well let's get earl has kiss ever won a grammy i think they were nominated for one uh i don't think they've ever won one believe me gene would let you know if they did. <laughs> i mean you know but gene's you know we're in this election cycle and i know you're a political junkie uh, I think I sent out a tweet the other day, uh, yesterday, saying Gene Simmons and Donald Trump are very similar with their facts. Like, like Gene always used to... Like, Donald Trump got into trouble yesterday on CNN for saying uh, wherever he was giving a speech was packed. Right. Standing room only and full of black people. And they... CNN had a camera there and they scanned the crowd. It was like one black guy out of like a couple hundred. <laughs> and then they had a camera in the back of the room where there was at least two, three hundred empty seats. And, and it reminded me of when Gene Simmons said that the uh, four solo records released on the same day, which I don't think has ever been done since, uh, all sold platinum, which was not the case. They shipped platinum. <laughs> so you're, you're saying he's got a, a garage full of platinum albums sitting in there and stuff and he gives them his uh, christmas gifts and, so, and you know, like that or something or well no i mean the record stores had to return them back to the record company oh god that would suck because uh you know uh you think it would have been one great album but uh you know I think uh, most people think Ace, is ha Ace had the best album and then maybe Paul and, then, you know, Gene had some, all these celebrities on it, like Helen Reddy and Joe Perry and I think Diana Ross and Cher and Katie Seagal. Does, does Paul Stanley live in L.A. too? Uh, I think he does. Uh, and I'm wearing my uh, Paul Stanley tour shirt. Oh, wow. I didn't even know. <laughs> uh, from his uh, solo album that he put out a couple of years when ago. He goes, when he goes on tour... Does he on solo? Does he sing his Kiss songs? Well, well, all yes, but he did a show the other uh, week at the Roxy, where it was uh, called Soul Station, and it was Paul Stanley, uh, the drummer from Kiss, Eric Singer, real name Eric Minsinger, and uh, I think Bob Kulick, and uh, I don't know who uh, the bass player was. Uh, and Bob Kulick was was the brother, right? Of, of Bruce Kulick. Right. And Bob Kulick basically tapped to be in Kiss, and then Ace walked in, and, and you know, the rest is, as they would say, Kistery. And, uh, <laughs> but he did all soul songs. Oh, wow. You know, he did, like... Uh, I, you know, like stuff like Marvin Gaye songs and, uh, you know, stuff like that, which, you know, I don't, I mean, I'm sure it was sold out, but 
I don't know how many people want to hear that. So. If you could, if you could start all over again and be like eleven years old, would you just try to be a musician instead of uh, a comedian? They seem to have it so much better. Like every single thing, they seem to have it so much better. I mean, I've always uh, my friend Brent Fitz, who's uh, the drummer for Slash. Uh, he used to work at. Uh, he's like my inspiration to keep going in comedy uh -huh. because. I when he first moved out here, he was working at, across the street from Guitar Center in like the third guitar shop that you know I don't want to say nobody went to, but like it was like it was like literally being a you know a, a furniture store right next to IKEA. It's like it's like know. where you go after you've been denied credit at all the other yeah. ones, and like okay, this one here it's yeah. called Johnny Guitars. Johnny Guitars is it still there? Uh, now it's a pizza uh, place, I think. That's the usual conversion, right? Do you yeah. go to this guitar place? So let's turn this place into a pizza place. Much better. <laughs> um, but I remember uh, I would go in there and, you know, they weren't... I think it was a money laundering thing or something because I never saw people in there. But, you know, they had this amazing collection of guitars and the Steve Stevens guitars were there. And uh, I think Robin Crosby from Rat went to this place to sell his guitar. Oh, wow. Uh, so I would just sit there and talk to him for hours. And he, he one day was like, Earl, you got a great presence, man. Let me teach you how to play the guitar. Even though he's a drummer, he's, he can play everything. Uh -huh. uh, and after like an hour and a half, he's like, I give up. Oh, just you don't 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 have the. I don't have the musical ability to be completely honest. And if you did, if you if you, I just like for example, one of the things is like uh, I feel bad when these when these bands come out with with like uh, you know the older bands and stuff, and they come out with new material, and I go see them in concert. I feel bad that I, I feel like shit that I that I get turned off when they go. Here's something from the new album because inside I'm going, no man, just play the hits play the hits i want to hear the hits or whatever like that but in comedy it's almost the opposite and in comedy it's like you go in there and you tell a joke and then you come back the next time you tell that joke they're like Bro, you, you said that last time you know it's, it's just <laughs> well you're right well i mean but see what i like i just saw bowling for soup the other night i'd never seen them and i i'm a huge fan of theirs but they don't tour uh, out here a lot right um and they were so funny man uh they're a really tight band i mean mm -hmm. 21 years and i think uh the drummer's been with them most of the time uh like maybe 18 of the years right and, but the rest of the original three so they're really tight uh i mean there's no fuck ups on their songs but they're they very sarcastic and the guy the singer was like all right uh this is gonna be a new song so what I would do if I were you is I'd go to the bathroom, I'd go to the bar, get something to drink, and then uh, in two songs, we're going to play our big hit. So uh, <laughs> and it was just like, where they get it. Like, you know, they're like, I don't know why they aren't bigger. You know? What kind of music? I, I didn't know who they were. You, you mentioned to me, I think last Friday you told me about them, and I, I didn't I didn't know what, what kind of music are they, what kind of band are they? I don't. It's know. like power, pop, punk. It's like... Uh, like Fountains of Wayne, uh, you know, uh, like Zebrahead, you know, uh, lit. Are, but, are but, they able to? Are they able to make enough money to just be the band, or do they have to like have regular jobs? And stuff? I mean, they've been doing it for twenty one years. Uh, you know, they're almost like they remind me kind of like Cheap Trick, where it's like. Why aren't these guys bigger, man? I mean, they, they write good songs. It's a funny concert. You know, the whole crowd knew every word to every song. It was packed. I mean, granted, the Rocks, he's not like, you know, fucking Dodger Stadium. Uh, they had a good opening act, the Dolly Rots. Uh -huh. They were kind of the very similar vein, joking between songs. And, and where did you say they're from? I think Austin, Texas. Really? Yeah. That's they, so funny because I don't I don't remember them. But then again, I got out. If they've been going for 21 years, they were probably getting started right when I was getting out of there. Yeah. I mean, they're, uh, they had a big hit in uh, 1985. Uh, they, um, uh, High School Never Ends was like a, a, a pretty big hit. Right. Um, and they have really, it, it's the funniest music video I've ever seen. It's called My Weena. And it's a song about, uh, you know, the guy's dick. And 
in the video, they have this beautiful girl walking around in a giant dick outfit. Like, he's shaving in the mirror, and uh-huh. the camera pans to her, and she's shaving her balls. <laughs> and it's like these big, huge balls, and, and like... Ari David style. Yeah, like Ari Shafir-sized <laughs> balls, and uh, like there was this part where they're trying to figure out what to eat, and the song's playing, so it's just quietly done, and, uh, you know, someone says, like, hamburger they hold up a menu that says hamburgers and the girl's like no and then the guy holds up a menu that says fish tacos and she starts going yes and it's just (laughs) stupid like so 1985 so they've been like that's like 30 years well i mean well no i mean 1985 was their big hit like the Uh, song it's called it's a song oh the song is called 1985 okay and and the video is really funny because they're mocking like motley Crue and poison and and the the video is uh some girl kind of Mocking Tony Katane on the hood of a car. Oh no! And uh, but you could tell they're fans of the that era, right? Was, right. You know, kind of doing a Steel Panther mocking tribute. I like that. That's that's so that I love that band. They're, that's that's such. A, I think they're geniuses for doing that. You know that that this whole concept of just kind of a mocking eighties. Oh yeah, thing. they make so much. People don't realize how much money Steel Panther makes. They make six figures a year. Good for them, man. And they just got opening up for Judas Priest. I so. saw them open up for Guns N' Roses at the forum. That's that's where I saw them and stuff. And I was like, wow, this is a, this is a great concept. Yeah, I mean, it, it's. Uh, but I think young kids, probably like fifteen to twenty five, are like, what are they making fun of? Like they weren't born in that. I think if you were like our age in your forties, it's hilarious. Yeah. I think if you're any younger than that and you don't know who Molly Crew and Rat and 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 we'll get to Rat's shenanigans in a second. Uh, you're like, what are they making fun of? You know, speaking of Molly Crew, I heard this weird thing yesterday. I heard this uh, interview, uh, Pamela Anderson, and she was talking about you know like being married to Tommy Lee and stuff. And she said, I never heard this before. Maybe you heard this before. She said that Tommy Lee, like at the time that they were married, that the reason that he was so explosive and like getting into fights and everything like that and violent was because he was taking steroids because he wanted to get buffed up for her because she knew that he knew that she liked these big muscly guys and he was you know he was all thin and he was taking steroids and she said that she kept on finding needles all over the house and she thought he was doing heroin and uh and I, but i'd never heard had you ever heard that before i mean i he, he definitely had the tent no i'd never heard it before it, it's believable i guess but uh um lois has now brought her uh squeaky toy to be put on the podcast hey there uh can you throw me that squeaky toy sure, before sure. she probably uh <laughs> <laughs> little mini not, tennis ball there it's, it's not here's the funny thing about lois i've got her literally probably 500 dollars worth of toys squeakies and the her the only one she plays with looks like edward james almost face i mean <laughs> so uh, it's all good though but uh oh there's trump trunk in oklahoma just you're raising the roof what do you what do you what do you think about this i mean do you think he's gonna i already think he's burning out right now already yeah, he's starting to. I think people are are kind of sick of the, uh, you know, you don't need to know the details. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You like the answers later. Well, I think people are starting to go. All right, at least give us a little tasty of, you know. It reminds me of when you go buy a car and you're you're like, how much does this car cost? And they're like. How much can you pay a month? Yeah. And then you're like, no, I want to know. My my girlfriend goes berserk when they do that. You know, she goes, I'm asking how much the car is, not how much you can pay a month. Because they're like, you know, you tell them how much you can pay a month. They'll be like, oh, we'll figure out a way to just get you that payment. But so much money, we're just going to go crazy. Let's see these people, man. I, I, I have to worry about people that come out to these things, man. Like so early, it's like. Well, you think they just want to see a celebrity? Is, is you think that's why they come? I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, we've been to pro- Oklahoma. That's right. I don't know if uh, that was in prior oh, Oklahoma City, I guess, but you know, these people. Uh, well, they're at the fair. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to a fair in Oklahoma for uh, entertainment, I mean, you. Probably one step below a reality show contestant. I saw ZZ Top at the fair two weeks ago over here at the LA County Fair. How were they? They're great. They're good. They're good for, you know, you have to give it up for guys that have been doing it that long and stuff. You talk about a band that's been together for a long time. Uh, 
you know, you, you have to, the, the people, dude, have you ever been to the Fo- Pomona County Fair? Um, I've been to, I think the Orange County uh, Fair. But I'm not- sure, I'm sure the Orange County Fair is a little cleaner. Oh, well, it's, it's not the Pomona, it's the LA County Fair, but it's at Pomona. Dude, there are some people over there that uh, I can't even, dis- just to describe the way they look, the bad tattoos, the worst tattoos you've ever seen on people. You can't figure out if they're like tweakers or you know you don't know you know it's kind of like people that kind of like kind of wiggers slash tweakers twi- you know very weird thing man and it's just it's just a weird you know like you see black guys with tons and tons of tattoos you know it's just it's it very strange and, and everybody has awful prison like tattoos they look just like there's no color in the tattoos they're just all green and it's just like you, you when you when you see that it's almost as if like you feel like you're in like that um Mad Max movie or something like that. You're like, where, where, where does this just underbelly of people? Because you never really see these people in L.A. Well, they probably got off the uh, set of Ink Master. <laughs> it's 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 strange. It, it it's really weird to see all those people like that. But um, yeah. So we went there to see them and uh, uh, but but it's 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 just a you don't even have to go see a concert over there. Just go see those people and you're just like. Wow, it's you, you, you know, you kind of like, no, nah, it's not even, it's weird because you know, we've been to Riverside, we go over there and stuff, and people are normal over there, they don't look any different in that. Pomona, I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> well, Pomona's like, uh, that's where uh, Bruce Willis was going to stay in Die Hard. If you remember the plot line, he was going to play with, he was going to stay with Cappy in Pomona. Oh. <laughs> but he called it Ramona. But oh, I don't, well, if that was meant to be like a punishment or something like that, then I mean, you know how sometimes they refer to places like this is the armpit of whatever. Yeah. I, I think Pomona has to be like the scrotum or just even the asshole i mean it's just it's just a very weird place it's it's you know there's alma says there's a lot of dirt bags over there that's the way she describes it. she goes guys there's a lot of dirt bags in this place and stuff but there's dirt bags everywhere no you but see these are like these are like this is like the uh, pomona is like the hollywood of dirt bags if you want to make it as a dirt bag you go to hollywood i mean so you go to pomona you know, I mean, it really, I mean, it's just like, well, I can think of several other places to send them to <laughs> a couple bars. I know. Of, but. Yeah. We've been, we've been, yeah. You know what we've seen, we, you know, the same types of characters we've seen at the, like the Michael's pubs and stuff like that. It's like that, but on steroids, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's just like that now. So who's going to come next now? So if Trump is kind of coming, isn't it time for that Carly? Fioroni to make her way in. I mean, isn't doesn't she look like the one that they're going to start saying, "Oh, you know, she's she's thing." Or do you think it's going to be Dr. Ben Carson? Well, I mean, I think uh, Dr. Carson is uh, he's probably too smart for the gig. Is your is your uh, is your mic uh, coming undone there? My mic has just come undone. We got uh, technical difficulties. I can keep on talking here. But who do you think is going to do it? Uh, I think I think there's going to be a little bit of romance with Carly Fioroni. Carly Fioroni. I think that's going to go on for a while, and then she's going to start messing up or whatever. Then Doctor Ben Carson will be there, and he'll have his moment. Then something will come up, and then eventually everybody will start getting behind probably jeb bush i mean that that's 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 what i i see happening well jeb bush uh looks like he doesn't even want to be there so uh, he doesn't not with all those not with all those those people like um i i I don't think like uh I, i i don't think those guys like that haven't been in politics before i don't think they understand what politics is like you know like i think trump thinks that he can just be president and be like all right we're gonna do this 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 and then uh, i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this and it's not like that you know and all the people that have been in politics know that you can't do everything like that and they don't want to 
they don't want to lie as bad as, as these other guys are lying, you know, and, and it kind of makes them look like idiots. But so I think they're just waiting for it. I think they know that they're going to peter out. They're going to, they're, they're going to flame out. You remember, you remember that guy what was his name? The, the black guy that was the pizza guy, the Herman, 999, Herman Cain. Herman Cain. Yeah. And it was 999. Like, yeah. Oh, Herman Cain, he's going to be president or whatever like that. Next thing you know, some chick, oh yeah, he's used to, you know, tell me how sexy I looked or whatever like that. Believe me, if Trump got far enough, there, there'd be chicks. I mean, you can't look at Trump and tell me that there, there aren't a hundred women out there that he hadn't, you know, told, hey, nice ass or something like that too, that are just waiting. They just have stories and waiting to come up. But... They might be sick of him enough already to where they might just say, hey, you know, let's just bring on the next person. Well, I think that uh, at the end of the day, he, he initially got his like momentum because uh, the straight shooter, straight talkers, he's not uh, aligned with anyone because he doesn't need the money. But then, you know, if he's such a straight talker, when you say you're speaking to hundreds of black people and then the camera <laughs> literally pans across this room and there's one black dude who looks like he got lost on the way to like a Wu-Tang concert and then hundreds of people uh, you know uh hundreds of empty seats are in the back of the room and then he said uh that they all stormed the stage when he got there and they <laughs> they showed when he walked on stage and not one person stormed the stage well i i read today that he said something about marco rubio and he got booed so so th uh, that already says that they're kind of like turning on him and stuff i mean i wouldn't be surprised for if if you went to one of his rallies if they had tables out there and at those tables they're selling his books they're selling his ties they're selling his waters you know just uh, you know I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is just a promotional sales tour just to sell merchandise you know and, and uh cuz you know he says i don't need anybody's money but it's not like he's spending a lot of money he's not putting ads on tv or anything like that i think he's like you know what i'll roll on this as long as i can just sell enough books and ties and whatever else I sell to break even. But if these guys ask me to put in my you know own money, like I'm not putting in fifty million dollars of my money. You know, he's not going to do that. You know, I I know he's not. Well, I think it's like you know, it's like the Gene Simmons. I don't think there's a more perfect analogy than you know he says he's worth ten billion dollars, but then they had some guy I think on like Jim Cramer's show, which you know consider the source. Bye, 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 Jim Cramer. Uh, <laughs> but the guys like uh, I've researched his wealth. I don't think he's worth more than two billion dollars. Now, who cares? After a billion, I mean, two is as good. Right, as 10. right, right. But it just goes to his bullshit. In uh, I think people now are like, all right, we get it. It's funny, The Apprentice. You know, let's see a, a plan, any plan. I mean, like when he was next to Ben Carson on that last debate, giving his take on vaccines, and then, <laughs> you're literally next to a, a fucking brain surgeon. Uh, and, you know, it's like, dude, you look like a fool. That's 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 something that's very disturbing about the it seems like like like, like uh, you know if, if Ben Carson started saying hey listen I could tell you which buildings you need to buy which buildings you know would be the best investments for hotels I can tell you where to buy the ideal casino you know I, I know all this stuff you know he'd say look you don't know a goddamn thing about real estate man you've been a doctor your whole fucking life you know when I need a brain surgery I'll ask you but they talk about these things like they know them or something like you know they don't know any, any, any anything about vaccines or anything like that let the old doctor talk and what does what I, I want to see somebody just stand up and say hey man trump you're full of shit you know you, you you really are you don't know what you're talking about just shut up let us take care of this you know or something like that but right now everybody's ben carson he's such a nice guy like he does he's just he just seems like he's just like oh well well, I think he'd be a good doctor. Even after he said that stuff about vaccines, he was like, "Well, I think he'd be a good doctor." He doesn't like he doesn't like to rock the boat, you know. But eventually, so you know, somebody will come in there. But I just wish these guys like, like, 
Huckabee. I wish those. I wish those guys would just get out. Oh yeah, you, like, you, you know, it just takes up valuable. Like, how good would these debates be if it was just like like the top five guys or girl uh, instead of like having Rand Paul? The guy's got one percent of the fucking yeah, vote. Yeah, get out, man. You know, it's it's like if, if people really wanted you in there, that you know, there there you more people be voting for you. You know, it's it's like get out. You're just you're just taking up space. But I, I think for a lot like this guy uh, Huckabee. I think that's like that's like a job for him. You know, it, it's like a Santorum. For those guys, that's the job. They're like, hey, man, I can have my expenses paid for the next, you know, six months if I just run for president. You know, I can travel. I can uh, maybe make some new business connections or maybe get some new business going and uh, stay in some really nice first class hotels and travel and eat really well and, you know, just keep my, my name out there. Knowing that there's no way, you know, America's ever going to like the funniest thing is the people that couldn't win a race of their own like a local race and they think oh but i know my own state didn't want me but the rest of the country does i mean that's the way kind of like carly ferrioni is that's the way uh santorum is that's the way huckabee well i don't know if huckabee he might have just quit politics but they don't even if they don't even want you where you're from no what makes you think the whole country's gonna want you yeah i mean it's like you know, there should be some minimum that you have to meet before you can like be in the debate. Like, Fifty push-ups, man. How about? <laughs> I mean, well, I don't know what has more makeup and hair dye on it—a GOP debate stage or a fucking '80s metal convention. <laughs> I mean, you know, and I'm sure the Democrats will be just as bad. I mean, you know, you got three people in their 60s running on that side. You know, I mean, what is uh, Sanders? Seventy-four years. He's old, old man. Jesus Christ, that guy he's, won't make the inauguration. He's he's old. I'm afraid that I'm afraid that if he starts that he if he starts getting popular, that he's gonna do something really stupid. You know, he's gonna get you know have a panic attack or something like he's shit his pants. It's just something like that. I'm I'm afraid that you know, and then and then it's you know it's you know I used to like I used to think Ron Paul was really like sharp and everything, and then as he gets older, it just seems to make he still he seems to be become more of a caricature of himself you know he's selling all this shit you know selling gold and all this crap and you're like dude you got a pension man you don't need this shit come on man just go retire and bang your wife and bike and golf and hunt and just get out of here man just you're never going to change anything just relax but he keeps on going and it just kind of makes him look just losing you know when you see guys and they're talking about you know like hey i want to save the world but you need to buy this gold first before I tell you how to do it. You're like, oh, get out of here. Come on, man. Get out of here. But I wish they would throw them all in and let them fight it out. The Republicans and Democrats and the same thing, you know, because I don't like this idea. They're all like, well, you know, Hillary, this Hillary. Hillary's not even in the room. Who gives a shit about Hillary right now? You guys fight it out right now. This That doesn't matter right now, you know, and, and I want these guys to beat the shit out of each other. But I wish they would throw them all in there. So if somebody did say, well, Hillary's not going to do that. They could do it like wrestling, and then Hillary would be like in the back of the stage and say, "Hold on, just a second. Yeah, and then come down the rafters. Yeah, like come down stand. the rafters like that. You know, it was theme music. I think, I think the world, I think the world should just adopt the wrestling format. You know, everything needs to go just like wrestling. You know, there has to be storylines, and there's got to be vil. Well, there, we already have villains. We already have good guys and bad guys. But you know, we need to have buildups. We need to have you know confrontations. We need to have you know, monthly pay-per-views and whatever we're doing, you know, it'd be so much better if it, it was so much more interesting if things were like that, you know, but politics are almost, you, you know, politics are, and even sports to an extent, sports are kind of like becoming like wrestling. You know, you, you, you see there's, there's like these little dramas between players and everything. And we're going to settle this this Sunday at the, you know, the stadium or just, you know, there there's buildup like that and stuff. And, and I, you know, debates, same thing. Well, we'll settle this Tuesday night at the Reagan library, you know, yeah, just, brother. yeah <laughs> kind of like that. So I, I love it. I, 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 I wish it would be more like that, but, um, I don't know. Yeah. I wish these guys would just get it over with and throw them all in there and let them fight it out. And, uh, it's, you know, do the election. No. I don't think you should be allowed to talk about the other candidate. Talk about what you're going to do. You know, that's the thing. No one, 
like says, well, I'm going to do this, this, and that. I said, well, Trump sucks. Yeah. Well, no one can really say anything that they want to do because then, uh, then they'll they're going to say, well, you said you were going to do this. I well, you know what I'm fascinated with also. Take it the next time you watch one of these debates or something like that. Take a look at Marco Rubio. Take a really close look at him. That guy is a young guy, you know. But if you just if you just took your head and you just move and you just you put it on his forehead and you just went back, you take off half of his hair, man. That guy is like he's forty four years old. He's a young, good looking guy, but he's going bald, and he's going bald really, really fast. Well, I can't get past the size of his ears. Oh, he's got big ears too. Oh my god, dude! You forget the NSA. Uh, just have him put his head out the window. <laughs> well, he'll hear everything. I'm serious, dude. Ne- next time. Uh, uh, you know, I, I can't believe Trump hasn't mentioned the size of his ears. I got to check that out. I've got some pretty big ears myself, but I, I have to see uh, if if, uh, if if they're that big. Well, listen, I'm not a male model, but I mean, uh, you know, you got some good size ears over there, Earl. I mean, they, I mean, you, yeah, it's they're not they're they're good size, you know. They're 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 not like a distraction or anything. But I have a big head, so I mean, but, but a big head is supposed to be good. A big head is supposed to be good in show business. But I mean, you know, so I have a big nose, but on my head, my nose looks normal. Uh, so I never, I never saw a big nose. I mean, you. it's pretty big. I don't, I don't think I, we know some. We know a lot bigger noses. Than but that. I mean, people have a big nose. Uh, like I know uh, this one girl. She has a huge nose, and it stands out because her head's small. Uh, you know, my I'm a big guy. Right, 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 right. So, uh, you know, I think it really. It depends on your body. Everybody, type. everybody. The, I, I've heard so many things where they tell me they meet a famous person and they'll say, like my brother, he said uh, he was working at this liquor store in San Antonio and I guess George Lopez was uh, selling some brand of liquor or something. He said George Lopez went in there and he said he had the hugest fucking head. So so, so I think I think having a good head, a big head is is a is a sign that you're you're ready to be in, you know successful in show business. Well, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> you never see anybody in Hollywood that's famous with a little head, do you? Uh well, many me. <laughs> well, he's got a little everything. Vern and Troy. compared compared to the rest of his body, well, is his head small com- I mean, I, I guess, I guess, but that—that's a great example of like he has a small head, but on that body, it looks normal. Normal, yeah. So, uh, you know, I just think that, you know, I love it when Trump starts breaking down people's looks. You know, he said about Carly Fiorina, "Look at that face. Look at Rand Paul's face." It's like, dude, look at your face. Yeah, come on, man. You're the last one that needs to be talking about that shit. Come mm-hmm. on, it's you know what's going on. Yeah, I'm with you with that too. It's like, look, <clears throat> yeah, sure, uh, Carly Fior, Fior, what's her last Fiorina? name? Fiorina. Fiorina. Sure, she's not the most fuckable chick, you know, and you know, but look, I'd screw her any day over Donald Trump, you know, that's for sure. I mean, come on. And I think most women, even straight women, would rather go and have at it with Carly than to be with Trump. I mean, he's just, he's disgusting. You know, it's, it's, he does, there's, there's nothing appealing about him physically. Like, you know, okay. If he had a, if he had a, a, an ugly face, but had you know good you know, in shape or something like that, or one of those dad bods, as they're saying now. I mean, maybe that would be cool. But everything about him, I love to see. I'd love to see a picture of Trump like in uh, swimming trunks. Oh God, I'd love to see that. You know, I mean that that would be the best to see to see him like that. But yeah, you're right. He has no business talking about uh, you know. You know, this chick's looks or something like that, and that's. I think that kind of that, that all that stuff. It's like you know, there's women out there voting too, and when you sit there and say, "Well, she doesn't have looks," there's a million chicks that have had guys say exactly that same thing, and they're like, "That son of a bitch." He reminds me of somebody I know, and and you know, it's like. Um, They'll Jimmy the Greek man. I, I think I told you the story where he one of the first one of his first uh, money making things he made in gambling was he uh, there was an election where uh, Harry Truman was running against this Dewey guy. Okay, and Dewey had a mustache, and Jimmy the Greek would always go and try to find all the information he could on something before he decided how you know who was going to win and stuff. So he would talk to women all the time, and women said. 
I hate guys with mustaches. I don't, I don't like guys with mustaches. I don't like guys with mustaches. So he kept on interviewing women and asking about it. And based on that, he was, he bet all this money that, that, that the Dewey was going to lose and Truman was going to win, even though Dewey was the favorite. And sure enough, that happened, you know? So, um, you know, women are like that, you know, women will, they'll go and they'll vote for somebody and be like, I don't like this prick because he, you know, this, or, you know, I don't like this prick because, you know, he said she doesn't have good looks or something like that. So you have to be careful with women because they're, you, you know, you and I both know how women can hold a grudge, you know, they, they, oh, they, yeah. and they never forget. They, they absolutely never forget. They may forgive, but they don't forget. And, uh, and, you know, uh, there might be women that had thought they had forgotten about that with Trump and they get in that booth and there's nobody else there. And they're like, I'll show you motherfucker who's ugly, you know, like that. And next well, to- yeah. I mean, that's the thing with Trump uh, is he'll never win a general election. The Mexicans hate him. The women, women hate, him. hate him. So the, the only people who are going to vote for him are like, probably like middle-aged white guys like that guy at the his last uh, town hall meeting <laughs> yeah the guy he's like yeah i'm gonna get all the muslims out of here <laughs> i mean you know th- that guy probably calls into alex jones every day yeah you know and and that you know what that was actually a lot of people are saying that that was the kind of the beginning of the end of trump because and then i'm sure you saw this where they they go back and they play uh McCain, you know, answering a similar call like that, where he says, hey, listen, you know what? Uh, He's not a Muslim. He's an American. We just have different points of view. You know, that's not true. And like that. And meanwhile, there he asked Trump and Trump's like, yeah, we're going to look at that. You know, we're going to. But in true true Trump form, that's all he does. Like, yeah, we're going to we're going to you know what? We're going to talk about that. We're going to we're going to. We're going to, you know, it reminds me of my, when I was a kid and I'd ask my parents, you know, for something and they didn't, they didn't want to say no, you know, and they certainly weren't going to say yes, but they're like, yeah, you know what? We're, we're going to think about that. You know, we'll get back to you on that. And that'd be, you know, that'd be the end of it. And like, you know, where's the ColecoVision? Oh, you know what? We're going to think about, it. you know, some crap like that. And that's kind of what Trump r- reminds me of, but. Yeah, that's a. I think he said, yeah, that's a question that needs to be looked into. Yeah, uh, yeah. Which which one doesn't? You know, we was like, no, we, we're never going to address that question. You know, yeah, of course it needs to be looked into. That's why we're asking you, man. Come on. Well, it's like you know the whole, uh, you know, like he plays to. Like the people who probably think pro wrestling is real. And, yeah, uh, <laughs> what are you going to do about immigration? We're going to build a wall and charge it to Mexico. Oh, great, great. You got my boat, buddy. Yeah, yeah. brother. I, I, I wish he would just completely, like, I, I wish that there was a, a politician that was just so shameless that he would just, like, tell one group one thing and and, 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 and go to the other group. Like, like I, I wish he would go to a Mexican, a group of Mexican people right after that and say, oh, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to lock up all the, Oh, the old white people, you know, we're going to put him, we're going to put him in a, in a home and we're going to fire him off up, up into Mars or something like that. I mean, I wish he would just completely just ball face lie to everyone. All this, you're going to lie, lie to everyone, man, you know, just lie to everyone. And hopefully you'll fool enough suckers on the way. You know, there'll be some, there'll be some white people that go into the polls and say, well, he is going to build that wall. There'll be some Mexican people saying, well, he's going to throw all the old white people and send them to Mars. I'll vote for him. Why not? You know, so I, you know, I would, I wish there's a politician to just lie to everyone. Well, they all do. No, but no, no, they, they, they just lied to their little group. You see, you know, they only lie to their little group. It's like, you know, so they need to, they, they lie to the group that they're pandering to. You know, so they need somebody that goes, that panders to everyone. That's what I should say. They need someone that panders to everyone. So I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to go in on day one and I'm going to break that contract with Iran. You know, you're, you're addressing, you know, neocons. Next night you're at progressive net roots, you know, meeting. You're like, I'm going to add Iran as the 51st state, you know, of the United States, you know, just, just, just lie, just, you know, just tell people everything they want to hear. You know, it's like, I'll make sure Sharia law never becomes part of the constitution next night. Sharia law is a great thing. I think, you know, which should become the next amendment. You know, I want to be, you know, just, just, just lie about everything. Well, that's what I like about uh, Santorum. Didn't he, like a couple of years ago, say fag in a speech or something? Like, at least he was being honest. I forget, <laughs> like, I forget, you know, he's pretty anti uh, gay marriage to say the least, but he, he, 
You got did, in trouble. Did he try to say I said something else? I was saying uh, yeah. flag or yeah. flag. I meant to say semen receptor. Yeah. <laughs> but at least he's being honest. I mean, that's initially why I liked Trump. You know, like, all right, this guy tells it like it is. But uh, I think, you know, he kind of lost me after he said John McCain was a bad POW. A lot like, of... <laughs> it was like, but he has, that's the beauty of him, is he shot up in the po polls. Because a lot of people say, well, you know, I'm not a Belushi shooting straight. But the thing is, is he's really not shooting straight. You know, if he was really shooting straight, he was saying, you know what? I'm not going to be able to do this crap. You know, I know you want to hear this, but I'm not going to be able to do this crap. The best thing I'm going to do is lower my taxes and uh, make things better for me and my friends. And uh, and I'm going to keep on telling you I'm going to do that stuff. Boy, I'm not. And then uh, and then I'm just going to walk out of here and make more money after this. That's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to privatize the White House. You know, I'm going to build hotel rooms on the top of it. So anybody, any American should be able to stay at the White House. That's why I'm building 100 floors on on top of it, only three hundred dollars a night, six hundred on the weekends. You know, you can stay in the White House too. You know, I mean, I just the Trump House. Yeah. Now I think now I I think though that like uh, I I think. Uh, I think what he's really doing now is now that you're going to see a lot of guys that are egotistic billionaires, they're going to start saying, yeah, you know what? Like I'm sure Mark Cuban, he's going to try to run for president pretty soon. You know, he's going to, he's going to do it too. And they're going to say, this is not, this, this is, this is just a really an opportunity to raise my brand awareness, you know, just get my name out there more and stuff. I would vote for Mark Cuban. Cause he's like, he does keep it real. Like he's always getting fined by the NBA saying this rule sucks, that rule sucks, this player on the other team sucks. You're not really supposed to, you know, say stuff like that. But uh, you know, I, I don't know. Uh I mean at least he's uh I wonder what kind of skeletons he has in his closet. Oh yeah, I mean we'll, we'll get drudge on it. And... I like the other I like the other night when uh, Rand Paul uh, he said something, and he goes, uh, "How many people? How many people on this panel have, you know, admitted to smoking pot?" And boy, you could have heard a pin drop when that happened. Man, you saw everybody just kind of like, and you know what? I'm pretty sure that everybody on that panel, with the exception of maybe Dr. Ben Carson, has smoked weed. He's probably smoked even weed. him probably too. But if there was one person I said it, I'm sure Huckabee. You know, come on. I'm sure that guy was in college getting munchies, eating donuts and pizza and everything. You're talking about Christy? Yeah, Christy, too. Those those guys, Christy, uh, Ted Cruz. I'm sure some were in college. You know, these guys were in college in like the 70s and, you know, the, you know, the 80s and stuff. They're, you can't tell me these guys didn't smoke pot at least one time, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, Ted Cruz, he's like a robot politician. I mean... At least Trump is entertaining. He's, dude, uh, he's he's frightening to me. Really, he he really is. I don't I don't like him at all because he is at heart he is a lawyer, you know, and he's a lawyer. He's a type of lawyer that he's like a, he's like a criminal defense lawyer. You know, he doesn't give a shit if you killed somebody. His job is to get you off, you know. So he's gonna do everything. You know, it doesn't bother him if he's got a murderer right there and he's going to let him off on the streets. If he can find one little loophole, if you didn't dot this T or you didn't cross this I, this guy's getting off. That's the way I see him. And I think that's the worst type of politician is a, is a lawyer that's going to look for little things that you did wrong. And go, ah, you didn't do that. So technically... Slavery is legal again, you know, or something like. Oh, he's got my vote. Though. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. I mean, I I just see him doing something like that. I think that guy John Kasich. That I think he's. I think he's a legitimate guy. I think. I think he's. I, I think he would be the only guy that I think that would might have a chance. You know, uh, against uh, anybody else. I really do. I think uh, everybody else is gonna get some some something that uh, people won't trust. You know, uh, let's say uh, Rand Paul, he's a nut. He wants, you know, the uh, Ted Cruz. You know, right now, Ted Cruz is a guy. But if Ted Cruz became the guy, he would become a Cuban all of a sudden. Well, I don't know if I want that Cuban in the office. Uh, Chris Christie, he's an East Coaster. They, people in the Midwest don't like him. Uh, 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 Marco Rubio, another Cuban, probably closet homosexual. Uh, oh. <laughs> no. What are you, drugs? Long, long going affair with, with threesomes with Ricky Martin. Martin and Drudge. Uh, <laughs> um, 
See you at uh, Collins Avenue. <laughs> Mike Mike Huckabee, uh, you know. Uh, Ex-Grand Dragon. Ex-Grand Dragon, maybe uh, closet pedophile, an anvil member, who knows. Uh, uh, they all have, you know, something, you know, wrong with them and stuff. But I think that John Kasich, Kasich guy, I think he is uh, a, a normal person. You know, I, I, I think he's the only guy in there that's... Uh, either not a sociopath or like, like, I don't think Bush is a sociopath, but I think people say, Oh, more the same. You know, I think, but I think that uh, he's besides Bush. I think he's the only one there. That's not a sociopath. But Jeb doesn't even look like he wants to be there. He looks like he's running because people told him he should run. I, th- you know what? I, I think though that, you know, it, it's, but, but it, you know, you, you know, the story of the tortoise and the hare, you know, and the hare's like, Oh, I'm beating you. I'm taking off. And then the tortoise is just like, Slow and steady wins the race. And I think that's kind of, the, you know, he doesn't want to say too much. He doesn't want to do too much because the more you do right now, the more you, you, know, you don't want to blow your load right now. It's, you know, they haven't even gotten to the first year of the primaries yet. And they, yeah. So it's like, he, I, I think his thing is just to let all these guys talk, let all these guys stick their foot in their mouth. And then hopefully in the end, I'll be standing because that's exactly, that's exactly what Mitt Romney did. You know, everybody was, you know, what, what's that crazy chick from Minnesota? Michelle Bachman. Oh, Michelle Bachman wins the straw poll, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, Herman Cain, New, nine, nine, nine. New Gingrich. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, all, all, Rick Santorum for a while and, you know, sitting there in the back waiting, you know, uh, was Mitt Romney. And he's like, I'm just waiting for you idiots to finish. And then I'm going to take over here. And that's exactly what he did. And I, I think, I think that's what's his name strategy. I think that's uh, George. I mean Jeb Bush's strategy. But I think like Kasich is like I agree with you. Like he's probably one of the more qualified candidates. He's qualified, and I think he's rational. You know, I I, I think he's rational. I don't think he's got a lot of. Uh, I don't think he. I don't think he's got a skeletons in his closet. You know, and uh, I, I I think that he has an appeal to. I think he could appeal to to people. You know, on both sides of the aisle, if you will. People hate Hillary Clinton, man. It's like they they really do. I I don't think she deserves it, but you have to acknowledge people hate her guts. You know, and and uh, but. I think I think if Kasich went up against Hillary, I think he might be able to win. He could. Okay. I'm not saying he would, but I think he could. Anybody else? I'm not so sure. I, I, I'm not so sure because they're just, they got a lot of crazy in them, man. You know, what I want to know is who's the next Republican babe? Because if you've seen Sarah Palin, man, she's good. I think her time has passed. You know, she, uh, you know, I mean, she's still, I mean, if you saw her in a bar, I'm sure everybody'd still go home with her or not, but she's not the babe she was in 2008, you know, and I, I, I want to know who the next Republican babe is. Any, any takers? That's a tough one. Uh, wow. There's not really many young uns out there. Uh, I mean, I guess it's Fiorina. I mean, oh, uh, God, man. I mean, we want to roll out Mae Whitman back uh, from her eBay. Uh, oh, I May mean, <laughs> didn't Meg, she? Meg Whitman. Meg, Meg oh, Whitman. I thought it was Mae Whitman. Meg Whitman. Uh, dog, she's, she's at HP right now. She took Carly Fiorioni's old job. Um, you know, I know, I know that there's a lot more hot uh, Republican commentators now. It seems like they they pull them out all like uh, what's her name and she's not Megan really, uh, Kelly Megan Kelly she's like they don't get much higher than her you know uh, but uh, yeah but they really put on that pancake makeup with those uh, Fox and CNN people and uh, you know good old Don Lemon they got so much pancake makeup on him he looks white oh. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. I, I, CNN's kind of a joke. I, I mean, it, it's like they're all they're all pretty much jokes now, man. I I, I don't uh, I hardly ever even watch this shit anymore, man, because it's also like all you have to do is just go on a thing and you can find out everything. Like you just go on Yahoo News or something like that, you can find out all the crap that they're the same crap that they're talking about because they it's like they find five or six stories and they talk about that same crap. All I mean, we've been watching this TV now for probably half an hour, an hour, and all they're talking about is the Pope. All right, we get it. The Pope's in town. The Pope's traveling. The Pope's giving his message. Who gives a shit, man? I mean, it's done. I mean, uh, what else do we need to know? I mean, if we, 
you know, but it, it's like they just, I guess they just have to fill time. Well, I don't really look to the Pope for my uh, guidance. I mean, you know, maybe you should, you know, concentrate on getting all these priests who fuck little kids out of the uh, the job uh, market for you and then worry about how to tell us how to live our lives. They're moving them all to Notre Dame. Hi. Yeah, so. I'll see, <laughs> see you on uh, Riverside and Woodman. Hey, it, was that, was you went to school there, right? Notre Dame High? I went to school there from 82, 83 to 85, 86. <laughs> Uh, probably the most famous celebrity there while well, I was there anyway was uh, the Cy Young winning six pack Jack McDowell uh, he p- pitched for the White Sox and I think the a- Yankees and Angels maybe he was I taught uh, he uh, his brother taught me uh, algebra was but, that was that a boys only school it's a boys only school and I remember uh uh, the first year was boys only, and then I was called into the dean's office because I it was a pretty good student at that time and uh, didn't get one detention slip or anything. And he, he, the dean, Dean Jerry All, I'll never forget him. Uh, said, hey, Earl, good job this year. You're welcome addition to Notre Dame. What do you think of the school? Like, you better get some girls in here, man. You're going to raise a lot of fags. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, next year, I think the Corvallis School for Girls closed down and we got their girls so uh ah. the final three years uh, my class was the first co-ed class to graduate oh cool so uh it was cool school i mean i didn't uh, uh i could have had a better high school my mom wouldn't let me play football there so uh probably better off now dude you you still have your brain oh yeah i mean i played one day of high school football uh and i was i've I've always been this size i've literally been this size since the fourth grade you know uh what are you about you're about what six six one six two probably two ten now back then i was same height as i am now right probably 185 190 uh but i ended up playing uh golf i think the last two years uh only because my dad had a membership to a country club. And <laughs> so you lasted one day out there and you just said, ah, these guys are too big or what? Uh, well, no, my mom wouldn't sign the insurance thing at the end where it says something along the lines of we're not responsible if your son dies or something. Oh. <laughs> you know, and she's like, ah, I'm not sure about that. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I kind of wish I would have played football there because I think it would have made my social life a little easier. Oh, why was the social life lame in in high school? Oh no, I was the class clown from day one. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, I think uh, I remember the one day I did play high school football. The co- coach gave me the play, and I went in the huddle, and everyone's looking at me like, "What's the play, Earl?" And I'm like, "Where's the pussy in this place, guys?" <laughs> and then they kind of looked at me like, "What's the play, Earl?" I'm like, "All right, coach, uh, coach Kevin Rooney, who's still there. He's uh-huh. still the coach." Uh, says uh, the wide receivers just go deep and get open. <laughs> so, uh, what position were you? I, they had me uh, initially playing running back. So, Whoa! Which I, you know, uh, but we, you know, Notre Dame was in a weird. Uh, you know, that first year, uh, we were number one in the country in baseball, right? Mainly because of Jack McDowell. I mean, he was literally. It was really neat to see it player of that ability who later would win a Cy Young uh-huh. pitch in high school. I mean, like to see some always that good 17 year old kid at 18, whatever he was, he was a senior when I was a freshman to see him throw a 90 mile an hour fastball to these kids with pimples on their face. I think it was like uh, shocking. He didn't throw no header. Every when, game. I, when, when he came in, like, like, um, was he one of those players that he was dominant, like when he came in as a sophomore or whatever like that, or did he grow into that role? Well, he was great at everything. He was great at basketball. Uh, I think he might have played football, too. Uh, you know, Notre Dame is actually a really uh, – it's got a pretty good history in uh, high school California sports. Uh, we always had good baseball teams. Uh for you older people, Tim Foley, uh, ex Pittsburgh Pirate. No way. He was like a star in the seventies. I know. Uh, 
one of the greatest high school basketball players of all time, uh, the Nigerian assassin, Nigel Miguel, who later went to UCLA. Uh, I think he played in the pros for a little bit, but in high school he was just... Would, like, would, would that school, would they like ship in like really big awesome talent like from Compton or something like that if they if they were really good or or would they well we played black schools I mean like I remember the I think later on we had to drop down a couple divisions in football right uh, but I think you know the first year I was there we played like modern day and you know that's a pretty black themed school uh -huh. uh and then uh, we never really did great in basketball. Um, that's probably my favorite class I ever took there was freshman year, eighth period. I took a basketball class. Like you got actual credit. For taking a basketball class? Yeah. And, oh, and probably I will say this. At that time, and he's now the head coach of the University of Pittsburgh, uh, Jamie Flash Dixon, uh, who's like one of the top college coaches in the country. He right. Was, uh, he was like the star basketball so did, did so you never went to an actual public school no no my, my mom wouldn't let me go near a public wow school. so, so uh, what is there like a lot of partying over there i mean is is is, is it is everybody because it's a catholic school right yeah notre dame i went to good shepherd catholic school in beverly hills and then i ended up going to notre dame high in uh, sherman oaks california which is a uh, obviously a catholic school it's just basically like the college it was run by brothers not what, priests what, but what, brothers what uh brothers like black guys no 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 that's uh <laughs> although that's a idea i have for a show uh, uh you know cbs just uh, concluded their show big, uh, big brother last right. night which i was walking the dogs last night uh, or the dog with a friend and we go to this taco place and the cast finale party is is was right next to us at big brother for for big brother and uh -huh. it was so weird like we were literally watching the show uh, i said let's go get something to eat and we see like all these reality people and i saw the guy who won steve and he was kind of a dick to me so like steve good job brother and he looked at me like i was some piece of shit and i'm like these reality guys, man, they they really let they 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 really let it go to their heads and stuff, don't they? Well, I, I literally the guy just won five hundred grand, so I, you know maybe it was a little, but yeah, I think he was weirded out because you could tell, you know, Big Brother they get people from all over the country, but they really have these stereo stereotypes of like you know the country hillbilly the bimbo from florida uh -huh. you know the jock from wisconsin you know the the you know uh the, the loud black chick from you know new york and i mean where i live as everyone knows at least it listens to this show is it's an incredibly gay neighborhood so i'm sure this might have been his first time around gay people Ah, so I could see he probably thought, <laughs> he probably thought I was some gay dude trying to fucking suck him off. Or was he just bucks. sitting there with like his fist clenched at the table? Like he looked unhealthy. Like it, it, the place where the party was at was packed, wall to wall people, red carpet, paparazzi everywhere. Uh -huh. And he was actually trying to get away from the party. And I, I was coming, and he, we were going the opposite direction. So. He walked by me and like, Steve, good job, man. And he looked pale. Like he looked like, I gotta get out of here. Like I've never been around this many fags before. <laughs> so uh, but I wanna do a show about uh twenty lazy black guys called Big Brothers. Big Big Brothers? Big Brothers. And then when they kick you out, you don't even leave because you're too lazy. You just stay there, sleep on the couch. Yeah, they're like, Joe, we kicked you out last week. Uh, who gives a shit? Hey, man, you got to get out of here, dude. Yeah, the brother. Show's, show's over for you. I also have a deal uh, for Hulk. You tell me this. You're a wrestling fan. Okay. Maybe not as heavy as I am, uh, but you might be. You're up there in terms of uh, your wrestling knowledge. I noticed you just bought a book, uh, www.kamalaspeaks.com. Yes, you, I'm looking at it right here. You bought uh, Kamala Speaks. Shout outs to James Harris and Kenny Casanova. Who... Uh, uh, Kenny Casanova, Kamala's uh, un right hand man, and uh, it's a great book. I mean, it's probably I've probably read about fifteen to twenty wrestling books. Uh, that by far and away is the best one. 
It really is because it, he tells these great stories that, especially if you're an older wrestling fan like me and your are Yeah, I was looking at the pictures, man. Like, there's a lot of people here you haven't thought about in a long time. You're like, oh, man, whatever. Yeah, I mean, like, he tells a story about, uh, I think, Andre the Giant and Bad News Brown are on a bus, and uh, Andre the Giant said the N word, like, you know, pretty liberally on the, liberally on the bus, and Bad News Brown, like, stood up and said, hey, man, do you want to take this outside? And, you know, like, people are. Probably will go at bullshit. No one said that to Andre the Giant, but Bad News Brown was, I think, a uh, medalist in the '72 Olympics in judo. Right. So he was like a legit badass. Yeah, he so was. He didn't give a shit. I heard. I've heard before from people that Andre the Giant was a was a, was a was a just like a he 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 wasn't a pleasant guy. I, I've heard people say that that he was a he was a real like pain in the ass or he was mean to people and he wasn't really into like the fans and everything like that. Like I, I've heard that before. I think I've I've heard people say shit like that. Well, I, I, you know, uh, and Kamala uh, had, had referenced Andre the Giant using the N word uh, a few times as uh -huh. well, and it got so bad at one point that uh, Kamala kind of worked very stiff with him in the ring one night just to go, "Hey, man." You want to say the N-word, well, say it to me in my face. Uh -oh. and, uh, so Kamala got rough with him, and I guess he went backstage, and the wrestlers were like, you're crazy, man. And, you know, he'll kill you. Uh, Andre the Giant will kill you if you wrestle stiff with him. And uh, he said, and he's got the shorts to prove it, he had a little pouch put in his loincloth, and he carried a gun. Uh, <laughs> in their matches, and which Andre, is crazy. He carried a gun in his. Kamala match. carried. Oh, Kamala. Kamala did. carried a gun in his like loincloth, and he showed the. Uh, there's a picture in the book of the, you know of the little like, like almost like a kangaroo pouch, and that's crazy that he was wrestling with a live gun. Wow. And uh, so, what was your idea for the wrestling show? Or what was, what was I, I got a great idea for a wrestling pay per view to save Hulk Hogan's career, and I think this would be the biggest pay per view ever. You know, we all know Hulk Hogan said the N word and didn't want his daughter Brooks sleeping with, you know, Bank. And uh, you know, I think there's one way to rescue Hulk Hogan's name and career in a semi funny way is if next Royal Rumble you have every black wrestler on the wwe roster and hulk hogan's the last entrant and he has to go through every black wrestler <laughs> think well, about the mainstream publicity that that would get and mcmahon would do it oh are you kidding he, me? he would he would he would definitely do that mcmahon had an al-qaeda character muhammad hassan he had like uh you know the gay character which is my favorite angle ever. didn't he have didn't he have some black characters that were like they would like steal stuff and everything yeah crime time yeah crime time. you know he had uh i mean kamala was you know if you look back although it wasn't a wwe creation a lot of people don't realize this but kamala was created by uh, jerry the king lawler oh i didn't know that yeah when they were in mid-south and uh you know and then he took it up to uh you know but i i you know People, I don't know if you say Hulk Hogan's racist or not. I mean, I think he is with the, the awful remarks he said. But uh, then he helped Kamala big time. I don't, I don't, I don't think he is. I think, I think he just said. I think he. <clears throat> I think he said some things that everybody has said in private, you know, and, uh, you know, it's, and, and you know, I, I, I just think that, uh, he just, he didn't do anything different than everybody else's. I don't, I don't like it. Uh, I don't like it when, you know, even what's his name, the old Sterling guy, I don't like it when they record you at your house, you know, it's like, you should, you should you know, have a someplace in your life in, 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 in where you can, you know, say whatever you want to say and not have to. Sometimes you just say, the, listen, everybody who's been driving in traffic, you know, has, 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 has made a racial slur to every single group of people. Not me. Oh, come on. Yeah. I've, I've gone long trips with you. <laughs> you know, every, you know, everybody has done that. And it's like, it's not like that guy had a pattern. Like if you could go back and look at his career and find him with a pattern of just, you know, black ball and uh, black wrestlers the whole time and everything like that. I mean, that might be one thing, but <clears throat> I don't, I just think he said some stupid things. He said some ignorant things, you know, and uh, I don't think they should, you know, 
ruin the guy's whole career about it and stuff like that. But he's not doing any favors to himself anyway because he's always just jumping around and, you know, uh, jumping around in leagues. And he's, you know, making more news about everything besides wrestling except wrestling. And they probably just said, ah, screw this guy. I mean, you know, I, I think it's funny, and I've said it before on this show that I think I said it on your show, Goodnight Universe. We'll get to the plugs in a minute. <laughs> uh, that uh, for the WWE to fire anyone for being racist is like insane. I mean, when you look at the characters and how they portrayed not just blacks, but mainly blacks, and, you know, Kamala talks about it in this book, how hard it was to be a black wrestler. In oh, the yeah. 80s. I mean, but, you know, how they portrayed Tito Santana as basically some lettuce picking Mexican dude. dude. They, have, they have a Mexican guy that comes out in a tractor now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, the, the gay wedding angle, which I remember that. I mean, the funniest thing we were was, at, the, no, we weren't at the gay wedding, we were, we at, were at the cane, cane wedding cane when wedding. uh, Tajiri brought out Poontang Pie. <laughs> and uh, but you, uh, the funniest part of that gay wedding angle is like toward the end where, uh, and it was kind of like you know, Rico playing like the effeminate gay wedding <laughs> fucking organizer, <laughs> he was really funny in that. Uh, and when Bill. Billy Gunn says to Chuck, uh, I'm not gay. And then the whole crowd erupts. Like, you know, it'd be the worst thing in the world if he was gay. <laughs> you know, and I mean, I mean, we'd have to have two podcasts to cover how they portrayed black people. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mark Henry, sexual chocolate, just that reinforcement with every black yeah. guy's, you know, some sexual, s- just sex. like that. Yeah. Uh, Kamala, a junkyard dog coming to the ring on all fours in a dog car. A chain dog on collar. Yeah. Uh, you know, slick the jive talking pimp you know akeem the african dream you know the other guy pimping ain't easy yeah uh, the godfather yeah the godfather yeah by the way the godfather if you're in the vegas area charles wright uh he was one of the last guests i uh was lucky enough to interview on piper's pit the great rowdy roddy piper he's uh manages cheetahs in vegas if you uh oh nice if you are on the vegas area please stop by cheetahs and ask for the godfather i i you you know what i always i don't care what wrestler if i didn't like him or not i always hope that when they they talk about a wrestler i always i hate to think that any of those guys have shitty lives when they're done i'm I'm sure some of them do but anytime i hear a story about one of them's doing good one of them's still making money one of them's getting back in there one of them's doing something i'm always happy man because i hear those stories about the ones that are broke and don't have anywhere to go and they're living with another wrestler or something like that it breaks my heart man because it's like how can people that gave so so many people so much joy and entertainment and everything like that you know to be so broke and everything like that it's it's, it's i hate that part of, of it. they don't like uh, watching that thing i was talking to you about the global super force or super card wrestling yeah you know 90 i think it's two years uh is literally like you look at every guy in there except for booker t and you're like wow these, where are these guys today man i mean Booker T's a millionaire many times over probably, but you know, these guys, you know, you thought they were, they probably all thought they were going to be the next Hulk Hogan, the next ultimate warrior, the next, you know, uh, Shawn Michaels, so on and so forth. And now they're, uh, their bodies, but they're probably in their fifties, sixties, all fucked up from pain pills. And, yeah. You know, it's just like, that's, it's like comics from the eighties, you know, <laughs> for every dice and Kennison, there was that, you know, uh, cocaine heroin fueled guy who thought i'm gonna be the next dice and then oh they're probably you know opening up for me in some b room and speaking of speaking of wrestlers and injuries and stuff like that i didn't realize this i just read this today that they said that sting got hurt oh my god i I didn't i didn't see i didn't see that i are they the the only time i thought they mentioned something about getting hurt was when they threw him on that table and oh he landed on a monitor but did something else happen well, I think that, uh, I mean, Seth Rollins, who's, I love him because he's got a great look and he's, uh, he plays that cowardly heel. Really, it's really funny. I like it too. And he's a great wrestler, but he's very stiff in the ring. I mean, he broke John Cena's nose. nose right. And I, when I say broke it, I don't mean lightly. I mean, John Cena's uh, nose was literally like wrapped, it could touch his ear. It was so. Yeah, I, that's all those pictures. 
I'll give Cena this. You know, I don't like the Wigger character he did, uh, you know, and I don't like, I mean, he, I've said this before. He, he comes to the ring looking like a NASCAR uh, a car, you know, with the, he's got that T-shirt with the fucking oh, yeah. uh, catchphrase. He's got the wristband, double wristbands on both arms. He's got the hat. He's got the chain, you know. It's like I hate how much his character. I hate his character so much. How much shitty merchandise can you jam on one dude? Uh and uh, but I'll give him this. He finished the match, and it wasn't just like they did one more minute with the broken nose. They did like five more minutes, and uh, you know he, he gets a lot of shit. So when, so when you say a wrestler wrestles stiff, you mean like they they don't? They basically don't protect you. Like, okay. Yes, wrestling's for lack of a better word. Although Piper wanted to kill me when I said this, and I didn't mean it disrespectfully. I'm like, yes, it's fake from the standpoint of the results are determined. You know, determined. They're scripted. Uh, the moves are choreographed. Uh, but when you watch it, man, and you, and you watch these guys going back and forth and everything like that, you're, you're saying, God, how could anybody remember this script? You know, just like, yeah. oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. And then, you know, something on the right-hand side is going to be there, you know, you're going to do this. I mean, that's, when I watch it, I'm in awe because I'm just like, although it does feel weird when you go, God, I'm 46 years old and, you know, I'm into rest. I don't care. I'm like, I don't, I don't give a shit. What do I care? It's, it's fun to watch. I think it's, you know, it, it's incredible to because it's a lot of athleticism. It's a lot of uh, improv. It's a lot of improv. It's it's a lot of you know you character driven uh, charisma, uh, you drama, all that stuff in there. Well, I mean, uh, Dolph Ziggler on TV. He's one of the top guys. He looks small on TV, and he goes to the comedy store a lot. And Dolph Ziggler's bigger than I am. Like, not that I consider myself like a huge dude, but right. like, uh, you, you know, so these guys are like, even though it's choreographed, you know, they're sweating they're you know, you got the adrenaline of the crowd, you know, so mistakes happen. And the first mistake was thing was Rollins threw him on the uh, Spanish announcer's table. I remember that. And he hit his head on I the think, mo- on the monitor. Or and those monitors are like, you know, they're real monitors. Right. I mean, that the. The announcers' tables might be rigged from the standpoint of not being like an actual table table, right? But those monitors are real monitors. Oh yeah. And if you've ever seen them, like out of their uh, little uh, area, they, they look like those uh, things that they use to uh, park airplanes. You know, like the the brakes for tires. Right, right. Uh, you know that hold the tires in place when the airplane's parked. I mean, they're that big. Yeah. And so that looked like it hurt, and then he gave him two. Uh, Buckle busters, which is the move where he picks you up by your neck and throws you back first into the turnbuckle. And I think Sting said the first turnbuckle he got like a really bad whiplash on. Uh huh. So then the second one he tried to adjust and he landed wrong and his his you could see the bruising on his back. Uh, I did see that instantly. <laughs> And so when they brought in the ring doctor, I thought, oh, this is part of the shtick. See, that's what I thought. And I don't think it was. I think they really were like, can you finish? And then uh, you could tell when Rollins threw him into the ropes and gave him a clothesline, like his leg collapsed. And I'm sure they put in the ref. If you ever noticed, the ref wears earpieces. No, I didn't know. Yeah, because he's basically, they call the match into the ref's ear. So I'm sure... Uh, it got back to Vince McMahon or whoever's in the pe- Triple H going, hey, Sting's hurt. And I'm sure uh, the ref got a, all right, have him finish it up. And I'm sure without, you know, they know where the cameras are. I'm right. sure the referee whispered, roll him up now or, you know, something like that to right. that effect. So uh, it was too bad. I mean, they, they butchered Sting. I, I, you know, I talked about it a, a podcast ago, so I don't want to like bore people with that. And we talked about it on oh, yeah. universe, but it's just like, they you think he's going to come back though. Well, I, I mean, I think they'll have him if, if he's healthy, if the undertaker's healthy, I mean, the match to make is him and the undertaker at WrestleMania 32 in Dallas. Cause you're going to need like a, you know, they, they want to have it at where the Cowboys play. Right. Right. Uh, which I, what is that? Texas stadium? Jones, 18, Jones, AT&T, oh, AT&T, AT&T yeah. yeah. That's a big fucking venue. Man. Yeah. It's huge. Uh, so, 100,000 people, I think. It yeah, feels you're going to need Sting and The Undertaker. You're going to need Brock Lesnar, who's from... No, he's from Minnesota, but I think he has Texas roots. Oh, I didn't know uh, that. You know, you're going to... You have to have him fight. You're going to have to... There's rumors of Ronda Rousey doing something. I mean, you're going to need to... That's a big venue to fill. 
So would you would you be able to date a Ronda Rousey? Uh, would you be intimidated by her or you? You better make her come. I'll tell you that much. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can date anyone. I mean, wow. You know. Uh, I mean, I like who I like. So if I liked her, you know, I mean, she's pretty. It's I mean, yeah. I think she's hot. Yeah. You know, I just, I just, I, I, I would think that some guys might be intimidated by her because she's, well, she's a little too muscular for my uh-huh. uh, uh, taste. But you know, I don't like when I say that about a girl. I don't mean it like I'm the end all be all of you know men. I right. Mean, you know, I like uh, typically. Uh, you know, girls that aren't that muscular. So you think that would, that would make you get into the gym more? Like I gotta, you know, no, not not really. I mean, uh, I mean, I get in the gym every day pretty much. So it's like, uh, I mean, I think there was rumors that she was dating Travis Brown, who's, uh, this big six foot seven. Uh, he's a top heavyweight contender. Ah, uh, you know, my attitude with women these days is, hey, you know how I look. You've seen the dick pic. Either you like it or you don't. <laughs> and I get a lot of repeat business. It's all out there, huh? It's-, it's all out there. So, you know, I get girls from my past calling me and, you know. Hi, Earl. Oh, hey, Earl. Remember me? Yep. How soon can you be here? Well, <laughs> <laughs> the grass ain't always greener. This is this is uh th- every time I come here, man. This is the ultimate guys, uh, single guys place to be, man. It's like, oh, when did you get that sting mask, by the way? Well, I uh, you know I do that show roast battle at the comedy store uh-huh. every Tuesday night, and there's uh, been a lot. You know, I do the house racist thing right. every week, and uh, with uh, various people. You know, was with Whitney, and uh-huh. now it's with a couple dudes, rotating casts of guys who are very funny guys: right. Pat Barker, Omid Singh, and uh, Keith Carey. Of course, I was I had Olivia Grace at the table, but she's only nineteen, so uh, she's was told unless she's doing a stand up set, she's no longer allowed to be in the club. Oh crap! So I do a you know. Uh, switch it up but i lot i've been getting asked to do an actual roast uh-huh like a serious roast uh so i uh went i on, saw you do i saw you do the uh the morrison guy the wrestler was, one which yeah. is fun but that was i mean it was serious i right. wanted to win he wanted to win right uh but it was kind of a, a gimmick battle right you know uh but i want to if i do do a serious roast battle i want to come out dressed as sting <laughs> so I uh, talk for a second. All right, I'm gonna. Uh, I'll break your back to get you to get you uh, to get you ready for it and stuff, and uh, and 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 then I'll uh, you. I'll get you one of those unitard things that he. I'll get you, are you gonna wear one of those? Or are you gonna come out with a with a shirt? Or well, here's what I need. I I went on WWE.com. Went on the shop page. And uh, I got a sting mask. I'm probably too lazy to do the makeup, like uh-huh. the actual makeup. So I thought I'd get the sting mask. I got the sting shirt that he wears to the ring. Uh-huh. And I got the sting gloves. <laughs> 46 years old and I'm buying uh, sting shirts and gloves and a mask. 47 now. I'm so- sure, yeah, happy birthday, man. I've, I've meant to tell you that. Happy birthday. Thank you. September 17th. If you guys want to... Uh, Send me something. You know, I give you guys a couple podcasts a week. How about sending daddy something? Get a wish list, man. You got to get got to get your wish list up there, man. Put it up on Amazon. Say, hey, uh, this is Earl's wish list. And uh, half of it goes to redirects the WWE gift shop over there and stuff. I don't understand how they. this is 2000. <clears throat> why, why doesn't Sting call like Gene Simmons and say, hey, man, how do you keep that makeup on your head the whole show? <laughs> Well, all I ask is for you fucking idiots out there who I love to review me on iTunes. Uh, you know, just do that. Put a bad review up. Just anything. I, I, it's not cost 20 seconds of your time. One review and Earl will go down with you on Sunset and help you pick up chicks on a Friday night. Uh, there's plenty of them out there. And he'll uh, he might even let you use his spare bedroom if uh well, i'm not gonna do that okay. <laughs> uh, by the way that uh wrestling promotion i was talking about was a global wrestling federation uh it was uh, based in dallas texas started june of 91 and folded in uh september of 94 
Well, I'll get a little run there. Uh, yeah, well, they uh, I watched it. Uh, I TiVo all the episodes because I'm a uh, a big Gary Hart fan. Not the politician, but the bald wrestler. I know manager. Gary Hart. Yes, he, he used to manage <clears throat> one of my favorite wrestlers, the maniac Mark Lewin. I don't know if you remember him. but I've heard of him. <clears throat> maniac mark lewin what he would do is he would just he would come out and he would just be like loo, 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 loo. you know and then of course gary hart would be like well i'm gonna take the maniac and the maniac is gonna kill you know whoever he was fighting and everything like that i love gary hart too man he was he was he was like was is he Mexican? Is he a Mexican guy, or is he Italian, or is he he's he's got some sort of like ethnicity to his voice? That I can't quite figure out. He was uh, American, uh, according to his Wikipedia page, and uh, I just found out today that Seth Rollins, Armenian descent. I could see that with a Mexican American stepdad. His actual real name is something Lopez. Oh, watch out. Don't let uh, Trump. <laughs> don't let Trump hear that. Get one. him out of here. I mean, he, uh, but I think one of the funniest, uh, well, he was in a world class championship wrestling, was where I got to be a fan of his. He, uh -huh. he might, he probably did some stuff in WWE, but like he, uh, like he managed, uh, Abdullah the Butcher. That's right. You know, uh, Gino Hernandez, Gentleman Chris Adams. Uh, you know, he was a manager of like guys who didn't really talk a lot, like uh, Great Kabuki. Greg yeah, Kabuki. Muda. Yes. He, yes. And also manager of the one man gang, who, if you know anything about me, uh, you know, later morphed into Akeem, the African dream. Ah. But there's this really funny. Uh, and I talked about it, uh, I think, two podcasts ago. Uh, you could tell, like, the difference between the WWF at the time, their budget, and, like, world-class championship wrestling. And I think later he was uh, a manager in NWA. But uh, he used to manage this guy named Killer Brooks. I remember like, Killer Brooks. Like a hillbilly-type character, motorcycle dude. And uh, they're doing a... Uh, wrestling promo in like an oil field or just like a <laughs> like a dirt parking lot and they start doing the promo and then all of a sudden this black guy in a caddy drives into the shot and you could tell it's not shtick and gary hart without missing a beat turns around and gives him like the white power sign goes yo bro what it be i'm kind of busy right now and then the black guy just takes off <laughs> It's so funny though. I'm not, you know, people are like that doesn't sound that funny. But if you YouTube Gary Hart Killer Brooks, it's pretty funny. I, listen, I I love that guy. He used to do promotions in Lubbock, you know. And I remember Kabuki because he had this thing right when he was starting to get fucked up. He'd blow this powder in your face, and God forbid that powder got blown in your face because you were a goner after that. And you had Maniac Mark Lewin. His move was the sleeper. He put the sleeper on you, and you go, Oh, this is what I was going to ask you. I keep on hearing this. You have to explain this to me okay how do you become a two-time hall of famer um i think if you're a manager or and then you were a wrestler and then you were a manager or you're a manager or a wrestler and then you did an announcer uh, it's kind of like you know for lack of a better uh, analogy it's like if you were a baseball player you got in the hall and then you later became an umpire so what are they so why is rick flair a two-time hall of famer then he was a wrestler and what are they uh, booker or probably a wrestler and maybe uh, won a lifetime achievement thing. Oh, okay but you know uh, that's probably one of the most uh embarrassing moments of my life when i was uh arguing if Rikishi should be in the Hall of Fame. And, you know, my buddy, comic at the stores, we're going back and forth, like not getting heated, but getting pretty animated about, well, you know, uh, he he did this, he won the Intercontinental Belt, and well, and then I'm like, I stopped mid-sentence going, we're arguing about who should get into a fucking phony Hall of Fame. <laughs> and Rick Rude's not in the Hall of Fame. How is that guy not in the Hall of Fame? It's, it's, a lot of grudges are held, uh, you know about the hall of Fame. who votes on that just mcmahon uh no, no one really knows i mean it's almost as ridiculous as the rock and roll hall of fame but uh you know like this year uh no uh yeah macho man got in this year which was you know there's always rumors that you know because people are like why isn't he in? he's multiple time champion right 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 you know did all this great stuff was one of the few guys to carry warrior to a good match and uh, there was always rumors that he had slept or had some kind of relationship with Stephanie McMahon. <gasps> and uh, 
the macho man yeah yeah well you know back when he came in stephanie was probably 16 17 years old i mean she's ooh. you know you gotta <laughs> fucking that's how he came when he came he would go ooh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh but that's like the crazy world of wrestling like my dad took me to uh, a wwf event at the uh Olympic Auditorium, uh, and because he knew a very famous uh, wrestler from the fifties was one of his good friends, the Count Billy Varga, and uh, Billy was a referee for WWF. So you know, my dad takes me back there and shows you his parenting skills that he left me alone in uh, you know backstage area with pro wrestlers in the mid eighties. <laughs> I mean, might as well just drop me off at Sandusky's house and say have a good time. <laughs> and that's where I met Kamala for, for the first time. Like oh, I, he was like, he had his makeup on, but he had a, a cut like a golf shirt on and like pe- leave like uh, docker t- type golf pants. <laughs> yeah. And he was talking to kimchi because kimchi had his uh, kimchi. safari outfit on, but no uh, mask. And they kind of felt I was just staring at him like, you know, because this is before the Internet. Right, so. right. Like if the if if the WWF at the time billed someone as being from Africa, you just oh they must be from Africa. There's no way to look it up. <laughs> you know, like now you could look up Seth Rollins is Persian. Two minutes after Monday Night Raw is right. over, uh, so he Kamala like waved to me to come over, and you know I was probably like eleven or twelve. And uh, he's, you know, a pretty big guy. Uh, he's like six four, three, probably three hundred pounds. And Kimchi was no s- small dude either. Uh-huh. Uh, and he's like, "Young man, my name is Jim." And I'm like, uh, "No, it's not." Uh, and well, what are you doing speaking English? He's like, "I'm Jim from South Carolina." I'm like, uh, "You're from Africa." <laughs> <laughs> and he ain't Asian. Kimchi. He's like some white dude, which I later found out was the Brooklyn Brawler. <laughs> but that just goes to show you the naivete <laughs> of, uh, you know, the youth that I experienced. Did it hurt? Did you like, hey, wait a minute? Or did you feel like you were in on a special club or something? Like that? Um, I was like, I mean, I was probably too young to go, this is fake, man. Right. Uh, but then like a couple weeks later, Eddie Gilbert was wrestling. And he was a pretty famous uh, 80s wrestler. Uh-huh. And in the storyline, he broke his neck. And then, like, a week later, he's on TV wrestling again. I'm like, that's fucking insane. (laughs) What recuperating powers this guy has. And then, you know, I kind of started to put two and two together. See, that's... I'm telling you, man. It's just like you were... Just like that Sting match when we were talking about. When the... I I remember when the the things came out and I go, oh, this is just... This is just giving a little drama and stuff. So you never really do know what's real and what isn't. That's my favorite part of it is is, uh, trying to figure out what, what, you know, is real. What's just, you know, who's really in pain? Who's really... Who really doesn't like anyone? Who really wants to beat the crap out of someone? You know, who... All that stuff. That I, I mean, I, I love that stuff. I'm really, really into. Hey, you have Direct TV? You said. Uh, Direct TV. Yes, I do. Do you, have you ever had anything else about Direct TV? Or is it's? I mean, uh, or is that? Is, do you have it because that's what you have to get here? I mean, I know I could get Time Warner. I uh-huh. think, but uh, I've, I've literally had Direct TV since '98. I, I might have been like a first year subscriber since it first came out. And I actually like it, to be honest with you, and. What is that? You know, 16, 17 years of having it. I could count the number of times it's the signal's been lost on one hand. Right. So do you you have that that one where they show all the football games and stuff? Do you get that? I have the NFL package. I have the NHL package. Uh, So, I mean, I'm a I get it for the Steeler games. Uh And, uh, you know, obviously with the uh, the hockey, I get it for the King games. But uh, do you ever do you ever watch it on your phone? No, I'm not into that. I don't watch porn on my phone. I don't watch football on my phone. I don't watch TV on my phone. I barely use my phone to make phone calls. I, I'm with you there on that part. But I mean, I, what, you just, do you use more text messaging than you do uh, t- t- uh, telephone? Um, I've never been a phone person, but... Uh, you know, I I don't, you know, I don't have a lot of close friends, so I don't really like <laughs> text. You know, I guess I text girls the most. But somebody uh, the other day said that's so somebody that I made a comment to me said that's that's why you don't have any friends in comedy. And I was saying I I consider that an accomplishment. You know? <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, I don't. Uh, 
you know, really talk to a lot of dudes. The chicks, the chicks are calling you up. <laughs> chicks from the past, old chicks, young chicks. You know, uh, they know what time it is. I like that, man. I, I mean, uh, I'm going to steal a line from Ric Flair, but I might be 47 dealing in a young man's game of comedy. But guess what, guys? I'm like Space Mountain and Disneyland. Oldest ride in the park with the longest line. <laughs> So all you young comics trying to throw me under the bus with chicks you're trying to bone, guess what? Too late. <laughs> do you do you want to date any more chicks that are comedians or, or do you want to go shit somewhere else? I mean, you know, it's all I'm around. Right. Is uh, comics and actresses. Uh, actresses probably better for you. Well, I mean, they're comic or comic act. slash actresses. I mean, you know, just, just uh, a full on actress. I mean, uh, you could I, just stand. You could just stand right outside of your in front of your parking garage, and you meet an actress in probably oh, yeah. a couple hours. Oh yeah, I mean, probably a couple minutes. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, you know, I like who I like, so it, it's like I don't really care what they do. I mean, I'm not going to meet too many people who aren't involved in the business. Right. Um, you know, I would probably say the last 10 girls I've dated or whatever you want to say, boinked or, or whatever, have right. all been either comics or actresses. And, uh, I'm not around a lot of people who work at Walmart, you know, so, uh, uh, you know, you gotta go find a cute chick that like works at the supermarket. Hey, you know. Just, just, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, but I also live in a gay neighborhood, so I'm not gonna run into a lot of straight chicks here. Are uh, even the hot chicks here gay? Uh, well, please don't tell just, me that. I mean, I, I always thought that they just came here because it was safe. Uh, God, but, uh, I'm reading up on uh, Mark Lewin. Uh, Maniac Mark Lewin, dude. Maniac Mark Lewin. He was one of Sabu's frequent opponents in the 80s. Uh, Sabu. Man uh, some of uh, Maniac Mark Lewin's uh, managers, the great King Curtis, Gary Hart, Kevin Sullivan, oh, yeah. Skandor Akbar, the mighty Atlas, and the great Mephisto. So, uh, see, know. that's, that's, that's the fascinating part about wrestling. That's weird to me that, I mean, that, I mean, I was like, I think Brock Lesnar is like the, he's like, he's got the, the look to be like this great wrestling star, but I think that he had, he lacks those mic skills, man. I think that hurts him so much. Well, that's why they pair him up with, uh, Paul Heyman. Heyman. Yeah. But it's just, it's just so sad. Cause I'm like, dude, if you could talk right now, you could, you, you would really, I mean, he's already probably one of the biggest draws, but he would be in another stratosphere. You know, if he could just take that mic and, you know, uh, just, chat away for a while and stuff i mean even when like when he comes out and he's waiting to come out he does this little bounce back right. and forth and he even looks almost kind of like uncomfortable doing that you know he just he just doesn't look like he's you know he gets into the ring he blows his shit out of everybody he's very comfortable doing that you know but it's just like can mike skills be taught no it's like you can't you teach either, comedy you can't teach you have it or you don't huh? being a front man in rock and roll you, you can't teach someone to be david lee roth or paul stanley you can't teach someone to be as funny as you and me i mean <laughs> you either have it or you don't you know That's, i can't fucking jump so what good would taking a, a slam dunk uh, class be for me you don't have the ability, you can't teach you it. You can't teach it, huh? You know, you, you can't teach what Brock Lesnar has, his size and speed and athleticism. Is he better in wrestling or is he better in uh, ultimate fighting or UFC or whatever that he does? Well, I mean, a lot of people uh, didn't like his tenure in MMA, but he probably has maybe the greatest fight card of all time. I mean, uh, I know the first guy he fought, his very first MMA fight was uh, some dude in Japan, probably a gimme fight, like get him in the game. But, uh, you know, all his other fights were, you know, champions, you know, Frank Mir twice, Randy Couture, uh, Shane Carwin, uh, uh, you know, uh, Cain Velasquez, you know, uh, Alistair Overeem, uh, you know, he was not fighting stiffs. Uh, well, that's what I kind of like about the WWE is that they don't, or I'm sorry, the UFC, uh -huh. they don't give you gimme fights. Like it, it, their attitude 
is you want to be a UFC fighter? Well, Brock Lesnar, we're going to put you in against, you know, champions, champions only. Right. So, you know, it, it's not, uh, you know, like pro wrestling where if you, you know, if you had to, if you had to stop watching one of them, wrestling, I was really, you, you'd let wrestling go. Well, I have a, a friend of mine fighting tomorrow night, actually. And he's headlining, uh, UFC Japan. No way. Uh, the great, and he's an ex UFC heavyweight champion. Uh, the great baby faced assassin Josh Barnett. Uh, so is he from LA? Um, I'm not sure where he's from, but he's a very uh, he is a uh, comedy voyeur. So uh-huh. when he can, he uh, um, comes into the comedy store. Right here, here's who's Brock Lesnar's fought. He fought Alistair Overeem, Cain Velasquez, Shane Carwin. Frank Mir twice and Randy Couture, which you know, all champions. Uh, Heath Herring as well. Heath Herring. Now, if Heath Herring is the worst fighter on your card, and he was a very good fighter, right? Uh, that's a pretty good card. So, how many fights did he have? Like, uh, like his five or six? UFC record was five and three. Um, but you know that like might not seem like five and three, but like you know he fought only the best. And why did he leave? Did he get injured? Um, you know, he, his last fight in the UFC was against Alistair Overeem, who is a very interesting guy himself. Uh, Alistair Overeem uh, is a Dutch uh, kickboxer, and uh, he, in 2003, fought Chuck Liddell right. in Pride. And Pride. he was 205 uh, pounds, and he now currently is 270 pounds of ripped just ungodly muscle. I mean, he Jeez. looks like, you know, in 2003 when he fought Chuck Liddell, he literally looked like Roger from What's Happening. <laughs> and now he's just like this black, uh, incredible Hulk. Uh, and in Lesnar's last fight, he fought uh, Overeem. Uh-huh. And Overeem gave... he's Overeem's known for his knees and kicks because right. he's a kickboxer. Uh, and he just a vicious... Uh, I think it was a left kick right to the liver of uh, Lesnar uh-huh. and uh-huh. you literally see Lesnar go ouch and crumple oh um so I think Lesnar uh probably I mean very tough guy obviously an incredibly tough guy right Lesnar probably got that and was like uh, I'm gonna go back to wrestling you hear that sting you hear that taker there's a spot there <laughs> go for so, the liver well, uh, well yeah I mean that's uh, I'm thinking of hitting someone in the liver I know <laughs> uh, and uh, that's where the fr- I'm gonna hit you once in the liver dude <laughs> and you know who you are I don't know if you listen to this podcast oh but... no <laughs> you got a hater out there no 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 I got someone who done me wrong oh no so I'm gonna tell you this <laughs> you piece of shit <laughs> And you, you, I think, can tell the tone of my voice has changed. I like this. I feel like I'm the announcer. BMT. You better have all your friends around you, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> and on that note, that's a good way to end the podcast. Awesome, man. That's a <laughs> heel promo <laughs> where 100% of it is real i like this uh, what a great tease now now i gotta find out so you think buddy you can run from me <laughs> you can't not even the pope can save you i hope it was worth it because <laughs> i'm gonna fuck you up <laughs> oh i love it so i hope you have good health insurance obamacare <laughs> You played a big boy's game. Now you got to pay the big boy's price. Chris Ramirez, where can people find you? (laughs) Goodnightuniverse.com, my website. Go there and... uh I'm also on SoundCloud. I'm over there with you. iTunes uh, as well. iTunes as well. Uh, and and YouTube also too. Good Night University YouTube too. You can actually see Earl there too. People go there to see you. You got a couple episodes you did there too and stuff. So uh, thank you so much. Always good being here. 
Yeah, yeah, you'll be back for more, as Rat would say. Yes. God, can you believe this? We did a show and we didn't talk about any 80s metal? No 80s metal. What the fuck? We could. I have a spot at the comedy store in 40 minutes or else we would go a little longer. But, uh... No, go knock it dead, man. And don't ask me on Twitter or Facebook who BMT is. <laughs> yeah, T. Don't ask. I'm about to ask you off the air here. <laughs> but I'm I'm coming for you. You better hide. You can run, but you can't you, hide. You can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> you might be lost, but I'm going to find you. <laughs> I love it. Thanks a lot, man. Had a great time. Inappropriate Earl, iTunes and SoundCloud. Listen to these before I get arrested for assault and battery. Because when you burn me, you get burned twice as hard. 